podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Meanwhile, it's time to talk about something that has been hotly awaited, and actually uh, uh, Google surprised us all by shipping early on Friday, uh, Hall- actually it was Thursday, Halloween day, Google put the Nexus 5 on sale, their successor to the very popular Nexus 4. This is a line of phones starting with the Nexus 1, which was, in my opinion, the best one of the best Android phones I ever had. I loved my Nexus 1. They're made by Google, or made for Google by companies, in this case, LG for the Nexus 4 and 5. But Google doesn't allow any uh, junk from the manufacturer, and because they're sold at the Google Play Store, there's no carrier cruft on it either. It is a pure Google experience. Now, the original Nexus 1 was designed to bypass the carriers. Google learned their lesson. They realized they do need the carriers. So the newest Nexus, the Nexus 5, is available on everybody but Verizon. You can buy it from Sprint. You can buy it from T-Mobile and AT&T. I bought this from the Play Store. Here's the amazing thing on the uh, Nexus 5, the price. So this is a 32 gig uh, Nexus 5. Uh, They also sell 16 gigs. Unlocked, unsubsidized, 16 gig Nexus 5 is $350. For $400, you can get the uh, 32 gig. Now, you do make some sacrifices. No SD cards, just like the Nexus 4, uh, and no removable battery. There's no serviceable parts inside. And uh, that's unfortunate. That's one of the things I like about Android phones, but not this one. Um, they've replaced the glass back. I have the, uh, the old Nexus 4. This was kind of interestingly stylish. It had a glass back and front, which also made it very fragile but kind of cool looking. Um, I, I have to be honest, I when I reviewed the Nexus 4, I gave it a do not buy because I thought the screen quality was low. It wasn't as good as many of the phones on the market, the top of the line Android phones. And I also, I confess, didn't fully appreciate the value of having a pure Google experience phone. I have learned my lesson. And a year later, I have to say, there's a lot uh, of good in the Nexus uh, 5. First of all, it's the first phone to have Android 4.4 KitKat. Uh, no other phones yet. Many will. KitKat has some interesting new features. This is the new Google Home screen. I've customized it a little bit, but this is the thing that's most important. One of the pages of the Home screen is now Google Now. Google Now is sewn into all of this. Also, a new photo app that's uh, a little confusing, frankly. There's still the Gallery app, but they also now have a Photos app on the Nexus 5 that really is just an interface to the Google Plus Photos, including their new Auto Awesome, their new video editing. There's a lot of new photo features in uh, in uh, Google Plus uh, that I really like. I have to say, uh, the quality of the camera is surprisingly good. Uh, look at that picture of the sidewalk. It's re- no, that was a mistake, obviously. Um, it's really rich. Um, I think there's an HDR Plus mode that does a, a great job. Um, this is an 8 megapixel shooter, still maybe not as good as the iPhone, but I have to say Google's really making some real progress in the software side of this, particularly if you're a Google Plus user. Uh, I think you're going to really enjoy the quality of the camera on this. That's a first for a Nexus phone, frankly. They've always been a little second rate in the cameras. It's also a much improved screen over the Nexus 4. It's now full 1080p 5-inch screen. Uh, and I felt like it was a little washed out. I think my eyes are ruined by all of the Super AMOLED screens I've been looking at. Um, it's The thing that really works well is if you have to use this in bright sunlight, I've never seen a phone work so well. It's about this bright in bright sunlight. It is as good in bright sunlight as it is in the dark. There's a lot to be said for that. Uh, of course, you don't have to use the Google Launcher. Like every uh, Android phone, you can use your favorite launcher. I'm, I'm just showing you the original Google Launcher just so you can see what it looks like. Um, uh, you know, it's an impressive phone, and boy, uh, for 350 bucks, that you gotta say that's that's probably the best deal on an Android phone. When you buy Nexus, you're also buying the guarantee that Google will update these phones first. So when the next generation of Android comes out, it's certain that you will get it before anybody else does because it's a pure Google experience. Of course, you have full access to the Google Play Store. You'll get the latest version of the Play Store. It's a little bit changed. Uh, you'll get uh, now the uh, the menu is over here on the left. Uh, you'll get that Photos app. It's a very impressive phone. A couple of us have already got our Nexus 5. Chad loves his. He said it's the best phone he's ever used. Yeah, it's an IPS LCD screen. Uh, looks pretty good even at an angle. It feels a little bit low contrast, maybe a little washed out over bright to me. 
Um, in fact, one of the reasons I have a black black wallpaper on that is to reduce that uh, feeling of kind of over bright. But maybe that's because I've been spoiled uh, by other uh, other phones and other screens. Uh, compared to the Moto X, now I got to say, in my opinion, the Moto X is still the best Android phone out there. It's very close to a pure Google experience, but Motorola, a Google company, has added features that are still not on the Nexus 5. Things like the Motorola Assist, which know when you're in a meeting or on driving a car or asleep and automatically silence the phone so that you don't have to worry about getting woken up in the middle of the night. It'll automatically send out text messages if you want while you're in meetings. Those kinds of things are really nice features. The shake to open. But this does have one thing uh, that the Moto X has. When the phone's unlocked, you can say, OK, Google, and the phone will respond. And <laughs> it just did. It just <laughs> did. And I think that's really a nice feature. The hands-free, no button to push. Um, the phone has to be unlocked for it to do that. This also lacks one feature that makes that really great on the Moto X, which is the skip feature that means when you're in a trusted Bluetooth area or you put it on a specially formulated NFC chip, uh, chip, it'll automatically unlock itself. You still have to unlock this manually or not lock your phone, which I, I don't recommend. Another a nice feature that I expect to be in more and more Motorola phones in time is the tap to pay. It's got NFC in the back. You can set it up with a variety of applications. Of course, Google hopes you'll use Google Wallet. It comes with Google Wallet. And if you go to a store that has the tap to pay feature, don't know where those would be, but one hopes more will uh, appear, you can literally just tap this. I think McDonald's does it a few places like this. You can tap at your phone and automatically pay with your Google Wallet or other application. So a beautifully designed phone. I think Google was smart to replace the plastic with this velvety soft touch. Uh, uh, they replaced the glass with the velvety soft touch uh, plastic. Much improved camera, much improved camera software. The photos, photosphere is bigger, better. The HDR Plus is excellent. When it ties into Google Plus and their camera capabilities, I think you get a pretty darn good uh, phone. Great video, wonderful video capabilities. The screen, gorgeous. Thank you for 1080p. That's a very high uh, resolution. Shannon played with it a little bit. She said she felt like it was a little soft focus. I'm not sure. You, you've probably seen the same thing I am, which is just it, it feels a little washed out. Maybe yeah, something that must like be that. what it is. Probably should. Uh, you know, play with it beforehand. So the pros, hey, the price is the, easily the number one pro. It is a great screen. It is a pure Google experience. You don't get purer than this, including the first phone to run Android 4.4 KitKat. Uh, on the con side, uh, no removable battery, no SD card, either 16 or 32 gigs. That's all you get. Um, and I do feel like the screen maybe lacks a little bit compared to the Super AMOLED screens from Samsung. Even the HTC One, which is also an LCD screen, I think looks better than this at uh, a very similar uh, screen resolution. Uh, nevertheless, this is a definite uh, buy. If you're a Nexus type, uh, this is going to make you very, very happy. Probably the best phone, phone uh, Google's ever done. The Nexus 5, the first KitKat bar in a telephone. And uh, that's my review of uh, the Nexus 5. Uh, I, I liked it a lot, uh, and I, I just think that there are other phones to look at, the HTC One, the Moto X. What's The good news is uh, Android phone folks have huge, uh, excellent choices nowadays, and this is just one more great phone. Hello and welcome to Ting's unboxing of Google's Nexus 5. So we will take a quick look at the outer box. Um, as you can see, the Nexus 5 image on the front with Google's logo next to it. <clears throat> On either side, uh, we have LG, who has actually helped manufacture this device. On the bottom, we just have some ESN and other barcode information. Nothing on the top. And on the back, we have the Nexus 5 uh, logo, I guess, text, as well as back image of the device, uh, Bluetooth, and some other fine print stuff. So let's actually get into what's inside which, firstly, will be the Nexus 5 itself. So this is actually the standard Google Play edition. Um, Ting supports both the 16 and 32 gigabyte versions. Uh, the width of this is actually quite thin. It's only 8.6 millimeters. Um, the screen size is 5 inches, so it's slightly larger than uh, the Nexus 4. Um, it's actually a little bit smaller than the LG G2 and around the same size as the Moto X. Um, it's running Google's latest version of Android, which is KitKat 4.4, which is basically brand new. 
Uh, and as well, the device has an 8 megapixel camera, which is a considerable step up from the Nexus 4, which was only 5 megapixels. On the right side, we have a power or sleep button. Just below that, we have the SIM slot. On the bottom, we have two speakers, as well as the uh, micro USB slot. On the left side, we have uh, up and down volume buttons, pretty standard. We have the camera on the front. And on the top, we have the auxiliary port. And I already showed you guys the camera on the back. And uh, the finish is actually a matte finish, similar to the Nexus 7, which is Google's tablet. Um, the Nexus 4 actually had a glass back, uh, but I do like the change to this one. It's very grippy in your hand. You know it's not going to slip out. Uh, and as well, if you drop it on its back, it's not going to crack. Um, you should be good to go. So that is the device itself. Let's check to see what's inside the rest of the box. So first we have the SIM card ejector, along with uh, a bunch of pamphlets, some startup guides, uh, manuals, everything you need to know to get your device going if you're having any trouble or you're not exactly sure what to do. And then we have the uh, wall charger and the micro USB charging port, which can connect to this if you want to uh, use a wall to charge your device. Or you can just plug the USB right into a computer and charge it that way or transfer your files that way. So this is actually the only things that come inside the Nexus 5 box. Fortunately, I have some other things to share with you guys. The first thing that I will share is what you'll need if you're with Ting and you have a Nexus 5, which is the SIM card. So these SIM cards we're actually going to, well, we do ship out to you. Uh, you can head to our uh, Buy Devices page on Ting.com and you'll be able to uh, pick it up. It's towards the bottom near Accessories. And as well, there is a link in the description below to get you right there as well. So this is the SIM card that you will pop out of the card. Let's use the ejector to pop out the SIM card holder inside the Nexus 5. So you just need to fit the SIM card in the correct way and pop it in. Easy as pie. You're good to go. You should be able to turn your device on and uh, follow the instructions on Tang's help site to get your Nexus 5 up and running. Lastly, we actually brought a case. Uh, this is a Nexus 5 Spy Gen case. Um, you can actually pick it up for 20 bucks off Amazon. And I swear they actually didn't pay us to say that. <laughs> uh, we just had one in our office, and uh, it actually fits really nice in the back of the device. So I thought I might as well give you guys a look. So it snaps in nice and easy. It's snugly fit. And it should protect your device if it falls on the back or the sides or the top. Uh, Fortunately, if you slam it straight down, it's not going to do anything. But uh, I know a lot of people do like these types of cases, so if you're interested, go pick that up off Amazon. And that wraps up Ting's Nexus 5 unboxing. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Uh, if you're interested in any other unboxings or app reviews or anything mobile-related, really, uh, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Uh, we'll be posting a lot of new videos soon and uh, hopefully have a lot of informative material that you guys will be interested in. See you next time. Bye. Para mí es un placer estar otra vez con ustedes. En esta ocasión, Nexus 5 en la casa. Vamos a charlar de lo que Telcel trae entre manos junto con Google y LG para que llegue a tierras mexicanas. Y bueno, acompáñenme a destapar esta joya de Google. La verdad es que Google ha cuidado, como siempre, desde el Nexus 4, la perspectiva de 
leer el, el producto desde el empaquetado. Ya habían hecho algunas cosas anteriores desde el Galaxy Nexus que pues la verdad es que no, no me, me dejaba algo en cuestión del empaquetado y esta vez hace el grabado de color que pone su logotipo por acá y también por acá la caja de cartón que todos ustedes ya conocen y pues bueno vamos a, a destaparlo con la ya famosa navaja que todos ustedes ya conocen con la que hemos estado destapando los productos y también quiero comentarles eh, algo que me llama mucho la atención bien de cada abierto he visto algunos unboxing en en internet donde les cuesta trabajo botar la caja pero esta vez viene por default y eso me parece muy interesante por ahí vean unos unboxing que hay en, en línea en youtube y siempre están batallando no pueden sacar la caja pero parece que en esta edición cae en su en el con peso y merece la pena bueno lo que les iba a decir cuándo va a llegar telcel algo que, que muchos se preguntarán, ¿cuándo va a llegar a Telcel? ¿Cuándo va a llegar a Yusacel? ¿Cuándo va a llegar a, a Movistar? Todo esto radica en torno a Google y LG. Parece que LG tiene buenos términos con, con, con Telcel, pero estaba platicando con gente de, de LG en México. Me decían que aparentemente hay algunos problemas en cuestión de, de distribución. Parece que eh, Google... Eh, por cuestión mercantil, trae alguna línea ahí muy especial que hablar con Telcel desde la, la venta del Nexus 4, que parece que tuvo ahí un problemita con la venta. Y pues bueno, vamos a, ahora sí a, a botarle la tapita y tarán, aquí está Nexus 5. La pantalla, la pantalla me, me llama mucho mucho la atención, es una pantalla de 5 pulga, sí, pulgadas, esta mantiene una, resolu una resolución de 1920 x 1080. Híjole, definitivamente al tacto es sensacional, es un mate increíble. Los detallados los hicieron de una manera muy correcta a diferencia del Nexus 4 que esto es de, es de cristal y había muchos problemas a la hora de que caía se golpeaba y esto, pero el mate me encanta, es algo que de las texturas que más soy fan y pues definitivamente es un 130 gramos, 130 gramos no pesa absolutamente nada, definitiva en definitiva es un teléfono que cuidaron eh, aquí con un poquito de, de, de metales y las definiciones de la cámara también viene en un punto en, en metal con un led aquí para, para el flash y, y también por acá el encendido y el apartado de botar el, el sim también muy cuidado algo que parece olvi que olvidó que olvidaron en el nexus 4 bueno 130 eh, gramos de peso algo formidable y 137.34 milímetros así y 69.17 milímetros así, ah, entonces la verdad es que es un teléfono que vale muchísimo muchísimo la pena, trae un de hardware, es un Snapdragon 800 y trae dos bueno, que este Snapdragon hay que hablar un poco de él, del Snapdragon viene eh, con la telefonía de Nokia Lumia, Note 3, LG G2 y el Sony Xperia Z1 si no me equivoco, estoy 99% seguro que es el Snapdragon 800 vienen esos cuatro teléfonos que también son muy muy poderosos viene con una capacidad de 16 y 32 gigas este es el de 32 si no habría que quedarse sin, sin capacidad y bueno una cámara de 8 megapíxeles la delantera es de 1.3 megapíxeles la verdad es que es un teléfono que en definitiva vale muchísimo, muchísimo la pena. Por dentro, ¿qué tenemos? Bueno, por acá botamos esto. Esto es simple papel y Google esta vez me sorprendió manejando la definición de azules y que Google en total concordancia voy con ellos. Aparte usa los colores que más me gustan, el azul, el rosita, el amarillo, un verde por acá perdidito y... ¿Qué les puedo decir? Encantado. Manuales con la llavecita para botarle el SIM, que evidentemente a nadie le importan. 
y más, más papeles, guacala, nadie quiere saber de esto. Y bien, cargador clásico a lo que ya tenemos acostumbrado es exactamente igual al del Nexus 4. Y por acá el cable USB donde le van a pasar toda su música y demás. Así que bueno, esto es lo que trae por dentro. Y si quieren ver la comparativa en otro video que les voy a traer, el, el siguiente video va a ser la comparativa de este y de este. Vamos a ver uno y otro qué duelo a muerte van a tener y vamos a calar el procesador del, del iPhone 5S que vale muchísimo la pena también y vamos a hablar del Nexus 5 y bueno, venga, entonces quédense, no olviden suscribirse al al canal y si quieren seguir viendo este tipo de cosas, venga, ya saben.